Good morning, sisters and brothers. It's a wonderful morning to be gathered for this occasion. Graduates, a special welcome to you, our third BSN graduating class. Parents, loved ones, welcome to you as well for being here. Faculty and staff, welcome. This morning is our occasion to celebrate the successful completion of our students towards their BSN degree. It's a proud moment. You've worked hard and you've earned it. As we celebrate today, I want you to keep in mind that today's festivities is about you. It's about the accomplishments you've made. It's about the hard work that you've put into this. It is no small feat to earn the opportunity and the right to be a BSN nurse. You've accomplished something big. And for that, we, as your faculty, staff, administrators, we're proud of you. We really are. And that's what this day is about, is to celebrate that. I'd like to take a moment to introduce to you our parents who will be bringing for us both our prayer of dedication and our prayer of invocation. The parents bringing for us our prayer of invocation will be Nora and Forrest Miller. They're the parents of Sophia Miller. And our prayer of dedication will be brought by Melanie and Fred Leapers. They are the parents of Tiana.
Please join us in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask for your presence here this morning in this beautiful space. We thank you for each one of these nursing graduates who are gathered here today to receive their diplomas and pins. We acknowledge the blood, sweat, and tears that each of them has endured to get to this graduation day. Isaiah 43 reminds us that you will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And we thank you for guiding them through their wilderness or their desert these past four years and bringing them to this place of success and achievement. For the families, spouses, friends, children, and the many others who have supported them on their way to becoming nursing graduates, we thank you. Throughout this journey, these graduates have received an amazing education, hands-on training, support, encouragement, mentoring, and friendship from the nursing faculty and staff here at Heston College. We are grateful for their dedication to these students. Though the journey may have been difficult at times for each of these graduates, through perseverance and hard work, they have been successful, and for this, we praise you. As these future nurses prepare to take their nursing boards, continue to give them strength and wisdom, Lord. And as they begin their new and important careers, please continue to bless them in caring for and guiding their future patients toward healing. May they be the hands and feet of Jesus. And finally, Lord, we say a special prayer for Bonnie Sowers. We thank you for the many years of leadership she provided to the Heston College nursing program. Be with her this morning as she brings the commencement address to this 2019 graduating nursing class. We ask all these things today in your holy name, amen. I'd like to invite you to stand and sing together, Come Let Us All Unite to Sing. The hymn is printed on page 10 of your program.
Each year, the nursing class representatives are invited to speak during the nursing pinning ceremony. This year, those graduating students are Sarah Lynn Oyer and Vanessa Steckley. Sarah Lynn was the class representative to the nursing department during her junior year, and Vanessa was the class representative to the nursing department during her senior year. Sarah Lynn is originally from Orville, Ohio, but currently resides in Heston. She worked at the college for two years as the American Sign Language interpreter before returning to the classroom as a nursing student. She has also been a peer educator, and she was a member of the population-based nursing lab group that created the Bike Share program on our campus this spring. Vanessa is from Milford, Nebraska, and has been a student at Heston College for each of the past four years. She has served as a student ambassador, phone-a-thon caller, peer mentor, and peer educator, and she has enjoyed participating in campus worship activities. And she was also a part of the population-based nursing group that created the Bike Share program. I now invite both Sarah Lynn and Vanessa to the stage to share their thoughts and reflections with their peers and with all of us. Good morning, I'm Sarah Lynn Murray Oyer and this is Vanessa Steckley and we are the student representatives for our class. We would like to begin by thanking the many people who helped us through nursing school. First, thank you to each of our classmates. We appreciated having such a fun group of people to go through nursing school with. Without your constant support and encouragement, this journey would have been even more difficult. Next, we would like to thank our families. I don't think any of us expected nursing school to be so demanding in all aspects of our lives. And we know you have made many sacrifices in order for us to concentrate on school. Thank you for being willing to support us during long hours of studying, clinical, and classes. Nursing school would have been impossible without you. Finally, we would like to thank our nursing professors. Throughout, throughout this time, we have recognized how much you truly care about our education and us as people. A special thank you to Becky, our nursing director, who was there with us every step of the way and always had her door open for us. We couldn't have asked for a better group of people to help shape us into compassionate, confident, and hardworking individuals who are ready to enter the nursing world. We know you have given so much time and effort, and for that, we thank you. Now, we want to take some time to share about the good parts of nursing school, because our professors, friends, and family have already heard enough about our endless grievances. <laughs> Although nursing school was extremely grueling, there were many fun times we can appreciate. For one, we all had to spend many hours in various hospitals and other healthcare settings. And as you can imagine, these days sometimes felt long. But everyone looked forward to the moment when we got to walk out of the door and say, one more clinical closer to graduation. Along with this, another great feeling was the last day of every semester, having the solidification that you were able to move on to the next, even more awful than the last, semester of nursing school. <laughs> And we can't forget about Marilyn. Everyone looked forward to those moments when Marilyn walked into the room with her smiling face to share announcements with us. Thank you, Marilyn, for being our fairy godmother and taking care of all of our administrative needs and so much more. This includes helping with our nursing photos. The only reason we looked so good was because you were there to fix every stray hair and perfect every pose. Another part of nursing school we could always anticipate an exciting experience from was simulation lab. Perhaps it was because of the crazy scenarios or fun skills that we got to practice, but more than likely, it was because of Greg. How can you say just one thing about Greg? Well, you can't, but some of the highlight moments include when he stuck a suction tube down his own airway, <laughs> or the creative outfits he would wear to fit every part. And of course, how he would dramatically yell at us whenever we did something incorrectly, whether that was almost killing his patients or simply making a bed wrong. Ultimately, no matter what the simulation was, Greg was always there to give us an educational experience we would never forget, as well as a good laugh. And of course, we will all remember our many firsts. The first time we successfully started an IV or put in a Foley catheter. It's safe to say, practicing Practicing these skills on a mannequin is nowhere near the same as doing it on a patient. 
Another monumental first is when we were actually able to answer a patient's question about a medication. And we won't forget the first time we saw an intense surgery or the birth of a baby. But perhaps the most important first was making a connection with a patient and knowing we had made a difference in their lives. And finally, this moment, which is without a doubt the best moment of nursing school. We have worked so hard to get to this day. And while we still have a few more hurdles before we become registered nurses, this is a time each and every one of us should be proud of what we have accomplished and excited about what is to come in the future. Now, where do we go next? Even though we may be going into different specialties, hospitals, or even states, we are all being sent out with the same mission, to serve others wholeheartedly. We are entering a profession where we will be required to pour out time, energy, and sometimes give up our own wants and needs. Since we have to be so selfless as nurses, our hope is not to think of nursing as simply a job or career. This is an, instead, this is an opportunity to show love, care for others, and make a difference in people's lives each and every day. Heston has given us the tools we need to become exceptional nurses, and now it is take, time to take what we have learned and use it to serve others. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah Lynn and Vanessa, for those kind words. Many ways reflecting what today is about, and many ways reflecting what you're called to be going out next. Thank you. Our scripture text for today comes from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. The first three verses reads, if I speak in the tongues of humans or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. It is my honor and privilege today to introduce our speaker. When I was growing up in the 1980s, if we said the word Madonna, the imagery went to a pop rock singer. One name, one word was all that was needed for all this imagery. On our campus, that name is Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie is the daughter of Milo and Clara Kaufman. Milo was the fifth president of Heston College. And I actually do wonder, as, as I was doing some of this research, I was wondering what she has seen on this campus with her very eyes and the transformation that's taken place and that small Bonnie running around this campus when her dad was the president and her mom was there walking alongside of them. Bonnie came here and graduated from the academy in 1965 and in 1967 graduated from Heston College with her college degree. She went on to complete her BSN at Goshen College and her Master's of Science at Ohio State University. Bonnie served here for over 45 years at Heston College, including 37 years as a program director. Those were from 1980 to, nine, uh, to 2017 when she graduated. I'm sorry. <laughs> when you retired, Bonnie, you still, you, you still look young. She also led our college in developing the Bachelor of Science program, the degree which are going to be conferred today. She also led us through numerous reaccreditation and reaffirmation processes here at the college and also within the, also within the nursing program. She's also assisted a number of other colleges in the state of Kansas in their accreditation process 
in their BSN program. She's also sat on numerous boards and committees nationally, but also here in the state of Kansas, in, the state, in Wichita, she's also well known for the work that she's done there in the medical field. She has also served twice as our academic dean here at Heston College, and for 20 years served as an associate academic dean as she led our college through the reaccreditation processes. The thing about Bonnie that I think she's probably best known for, though, outside of all these other public accolades, is the way that she walked with our students and advocated for them, both inside the classroom and outside. And as a non-nursing student myself, I would have to say you also worked with those students who weren't just nursing students, Bonnie. That speaks to who you are, your character. We are proud this coming fall to be dedicating a new space, the new Bonnie Sowers Nursing Center. Some of you may have seen the construction already taking place on our campus, but that in many ways is a monument to Bonnie's legacy here and the way that the rest of us are called to carry on in her footsteps in the character that she has presented to us. Today, Bonnie and her husband Floyd and their three adult children, Stephanie and Dion Sanker, Katie Sowers and Liz, uh, Liz Sowers, and, gr and grandparents of Claire and Sam and Quinn, they live in Overland Park. Bonnie, thank you for your many years of service here at Heston College. Thank you for being with us today. We look forward to the words and wisdom you have to share with us. President Monicum, Vice President Yoder, Nursing Education Director Bartell, faculty, staff, graduates, family, and friends. I am honored to share a brief meditation with you this morning, especially prepared for the nursing class of 2019, with whom I feel a special bond. Thank you so much for the invitation. Graduates, as I developed this morning's message, I pictured many of you sitting in my office as you were seeking admission to the nursing program. That was the first opportunity I had to get to know you. I was also thinking about that first day in class in Foundations One, way over there in Lemon Center. The excitement and the energy in the room that morning was palpable. The nursing faculty and I listened to some of your nursing goals, your dreams, and I remember feeling real really excited about the potential of this class to serve in healthcare as future leaders and agents of change. Do you also remember that we opened class with the same scripture that our president read this morning? It was Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 3. That was the theme verse for our college last year. We read that in class. Do you remember that? and then paraphrased it into nursing language that went something like this. If I complete a head-to-toe assessment perfectly but do not have love, I am only a skilled but empty clinician. If I have that gift of IV insertion and can recite the entire nursing text from cover to cover but do not have love, I'm sadly limited in what I have to offer others. If I give my time volunteering at the homeless shelter and work countless overtime shifts, but do not have love, I and my patients gain nothing. Those verses paraphrased capture the essence of my message to you this morning. It is mind-boggling, graduates, to think about all that has transpired from this first day of class. You have worked hard and persisted from Foundations One through the rest of the next three semesters of the program. I am so proud of each one of you. 
I have thought about you often. I have prayed for you as a class. Since my time with you on this campus, your competency of nursing knowledge and skills, it's been tested over and over. And it has grown immensely since Foundations One. You answered Greg's drilling questions in Simulation Lab. You demonstrated how to care for simulation patient Ann Bullock and her little son, baby Timmy. <laughs> you solved Carla's ethical dilemmas, mastered classroom exams, and are now nearing the green light for licensure testing. You demonstrated how to calculate IV flow rates and capably manage the care of critically ill patients. Congratulations, you've met the bar Maintaining competency and growing in that competency is now one of your highest priorities as a professional nurse. The truth of this statement was supported by a 2016 study at Johns Hopkins. Researchers there discovered that preventable medical mistakes or errors were actually the third leading cause of death in the United States. These medical mistakes were responsible for 250,000 deaths per year, following only heart disease and cancer. Graduates, we can do better than that, and we must. Clearly, being the most knowledgeable nurse you can be, a lifelong learner, that is critical. But competency with your assessment and skills is only one component of the word competency. As your faculty have reinforced time and time again, and I can tell you were listening by the student speakers this morning, being competent and bringing healing for the patient and the family includes emotional competency as well. Fifty years ago this very month, I was receiving my nursing pin from Goshen College in Indiana. <laughs> I didn't know at that time that I would work a while in the hospital, get my master's degree, and then go on to spend most of my career educating over 1,600 nurses here at Heston College. What a fulfilling career this has been. I was preparing to retire last May and spend time with my husband of 50 years. I was hoping to help raise funds for the new beautiful nursing edition that our program will be moving into next year. And Floyd and I were excited to travel and use our time in fulfilling ways. I found out last May that life turns on a dime. It can turn on a dime. My husband had a massive stroke. And our family found ourselves on the receiving end of health care in Kansas City with heavy hearts with broken spirits. Graduates, it was at that time I learned firsthand about emotional competency. I remember being taught these concepts as a student at Goshen College, trying to practice them as a nurse. I remember teaching them to students like you at Heston College. I learned them, I practiced them, I taught them. And now I know for sure after experiencing the healthcare system as a family member, that nurses must have both knowledge and heart, not just one, but both, in order for the patients and their families to become whole again. You know, I found it was easy to tell which nurses were at work because they wanted to be there, because they loved what they did, and which ones were there to simply make those monthly payments or buy that new refrigerator. I figured out quickly, it's simply not enough to be cared for someone who has baseline skills and knowledge, but just wants to hurry up, get those physical tasks done, and go home. One young nurse who cared for Floyd stands out in my mind. Amber worked the night shift at St. Luke's on the neuro unit. It didn't take me long to actually pray that Amber would be on that night. And I was staying with Floyd 24 hours a day at that time. She'd come in early to prepare for assignments. Around 7.30, she'd quickly clean up the room so she knew where everything was at. She'd find 
slippers and an extra blanket for me. And through my groggy sleep at night, I knew she would be in the room like clockwork every two hours, turning Floyd and saying comforting words to him. Amber was organized, efficient. Her regular presence made us trust her and have confidence in her. But it was also evidence from her words and her body language that she loved caring for her patients and their families. Even though Floyd had aphasia, could not speak a word, she always addressed him directly by name, spoke directly to him kindly, and her empathy meant the world to me. I reflected on our experience and I said, Amber, why did you make such an impact on our family? Then I decided to find her on Facebook and I immediately saw her post, you don't have to go to work, you get to go to work. Amber demonstrated that she got to go to work. To me, she was the hands and feet of Christ, doing what she could to heal Floyd's broken body and the wounded spirits of all of us. I recently nominated Amber to receive a DAISY Award. This award is based on a program that recognizes extraordinary nurses all around the world, patients that care with heart and knowledge. Andrew Bennett once said, the longest journey you will ever take is that 18 inch journey from your head to your heart. As a nurse, Amber was fearless in taking that long 18 inch journey. Graduates, as you enter the workplace, I encourage you to be a lifelong learner and Always improve your knowledge, your skills. Don't hesitate to ask for help when you don't know. Your colleagues will respect you for your honesty. And after the excitement and the newness of the RN role wears off, remind yourself that your own attitude has everything to do with the kind of nurse you are becoming and the quality of the care you are delivering. After doing much grief work over the past year and often simply feeling like I just couldn't get out of bed the next day, I said to myself, Bonnie, wake up, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You get to be a caregiver for your husband. That attitude has made all the difference in the world to me. One year after our crisis, life is good. I am enjoying each day. I am taking care of myself, but also doing what God called me to do early in my life, to be a loving caregiver. I challenge you, nursing class of 2019, I challenge each person here in the audience today to make sure that you love what you do. If and when you lose the passion for what you are doing, find a way to refuel whatever that might mean for you. One way I attempted to renew myself in my nursing practice was to draw upon my belief that each day I would find myself with at least one patient or family who needed just what I had to offer, that my presence in the room would be no accident. I would ask myself sometimes, why was I assigned to this specific patient? What gifts do I have? that are most needed at this time. Surprisingly, I often found the tables were turned and the patient or the family had something I needed for that day, which was a real gift. Graduates, as you go out into the work world, may you reflect to all those whose lives you touch that you are made up of both heart and knowledge. After 45 years of educating nurses here at Heston College, there's one thing that really stands out in my mind. The many words of praise and affirmation that our graduates have received over the years from nurses, nursing leaders, state and national evaluators. It was pointed out many times that registered nurses just don't get any better than the ones educated right here on this campus at Heston College. Thank you, graduates, faculty, staff.
Class of 2019, I challenge you to see it as your mission to practice nursing with both knowledge and heart. And I'm confident you will do just that. Why? Because as a Heston College graduate, practicing with heart and knowledge is not only your mission, it's also your legacy. We send you out from this place today with prayers that you will love your nursing career, that you will be empowered each day to touch the hearts of others in positive and healing ways, in ways that reflect the many unique gifts that only you have been given. May God bless you and make you a blessing. Thank you, Bonnie, for your thoughtful message this morning and reminding us all to find passion in our calling. You not only spoke these words this morning, but have led by example as each day your passion for educating and nurturing students and your colleagues was evident. Our prayers go with you and your family as you continue to walk this new journey together. Graduates. Today, as you receive your pins, you will be joining the profession of nursing and more than 1,700 nurses who have graduated from this college over the past 52 years. We are confident that each one of you will re represent Heston College Nursing and our mission for caring for the whole person wherever you practice, in this state, in this country, and around the world. The pin you are about to receive is unique. It is the only one of its kind and was designed especially for Heston College. You will notice that the lamp of knowledge appears in the upper left corner of our pin, symbolizing learning. On the lower half of the pin are the initials of Heston College. The sunrise, plow, and wheat represent the state of Kansas. However, you will see that the symbol that maintains central position in the entire design is the cross. It provides a reminder of Christ, who gives purpose to life and the desire to serve. Note that the pin has been molded into a shield. The shield signifies faith. Faith, first of all, in God, but also faith in yourself and in the knowledge and skills you now possess. Graduates, as you wear your nursing pins, reflect upon your learning, your Heston College experiences, but most importantly, remember that it is God who called you to serve. Heston College grants the following degrees, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, Associate of Applied Arts and Sciences, and Associate of General Studies. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing please stand. President Monicum, these individuals have been recommended by the faculty to receive a bachelor's degree from Heston College. By the authority vested in me by the Mennonite Education Agency and the Heston College Board of Directors, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing. The first row graduates may come to the stage to receive their diplomas and nursing pin. Others may be seated. Allie Nicole Anderson. <clears throat> Allie
Allie will be employed as a staff nurse in oncology at Wesley Medical Center in Wichita, where she will be caring for patients with cancer. Christy Nicole Bell. Christy, Christy has accepted a nursing position in the emergency department at Wesley Medical Center. Lauren Nicole Berg. Following graduation, Lauren will be employed as a nurse on the stroke renal floor at Ascension Via Christi St. Francis in Wichita. Mary Claire Blickenstaff. Mary Claire has accepted a position in trauma and medical surgical nursing at Wesley Medical Center. Alyssa Morgan Booten. <laughs> Alyssa will be employed as a staff nurse at Wesley Medical Center in the surgical oncology area where she will be providing care for patients with cancer. <laughs> Jamie Christine Bowers. Jamie plans to pursue her interest in nursing care for babies and eventually explore options for travel nursing. Desiree Brittato. Desiree plans to return to her hometown of Whittier, California, where she hopes to begin her nursing career in a medical surgical area, the emergency room, or a pulmonary care unit. <laughs> Jerrica Ray Brown. <laughs> Following graduation, Jerrica will be living in Fresno, California, where she will pursue a position in the emergency department intensive care, or a medical surgical nursing unit. Darren Jake Cornejo. Darren will be employed as a staff nurse in the surgical intensive care unit at Wesley Medical Center. Crystal Ann Marie Davis. Crystal has accepted a position at Ascension Via Christi St. Francis, where she will be caring for patients in the Intermediate Surgical Trauma Unit. Caitlin Alana Diaz. Caitlin will be employed as a staff nurse at Wesley Medical Center in the emergency department. Miranda Bailey Dolesman. Miranda will begin her nursing career at Wesley Children's Hospital in Wichita as a nurse in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. Lauren Kelsey Dunbar. <laughs> Lauren, Kelsey Dunbar. 
Lauren will be employed as a staff nurse caring for critically ill children in the pediatric intensive care unit at Wesley Children's Hospital. Paige Christine Ellison. Paige plans to seek a nursing position in an intensive care unit at a Wichita hospital following graduation. Sandra Galan. Sandra will be employed at, a Kansas at Kansas Medical Center in Andover, where she will provide nursing care to patients in the emergency room. Brooke Elizabeth Garza. Brooke will be seeking a nursing position in the Wichita area in, in her areas of interest, school nursing or pediatric home health. Tanner Alexis Hayes. Tanner will be employed as a staff nurse in the Medical Intensive Care Unit at Ascension Via Christi, St. Francis. Lane Russell Higgins. Lane plans to pursue a position in Wichita in surgical intensive care or medical intensive care, providing a healing touch to critically ill patients. Allison K. Jancy. Allison will be relocating to Salem, Oregon this summer, where she plans to pursue an RN residency program. Mackenzie Lou Johnson. Following graduation, Mackenzie will be living in Huntington, Indiana, where she hopes to begin her nursing career in an emergency department or intensive care unit. <laughs> Megan Nicole Crouch. <laughs> Megan has accepted a nursing position at Newton Medical Center where she will be caring for pre- and post-operative orthopedic, cardiac, and general surgery patients. <laughs> Tiana Lachelle Leapers. <laughs> Tiana will be employed as a staff nurse at Salina Regional Health Center, where she will be caring for patients in the intensive care step-down unit. Stacia Oya Grace Madrick. Stacia will be moving home to Iowa City, Iowa this summer, where she will begin a nursing job at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics in the Neurosurgical Step Down Intensive Care Unit. Emily Gay McMichael. Emily will be moving to Springfield, Missouri, where she will be employed as a staff nurse in the Medical Intermediate Care Unit at Mercy Hospital, Springfield. <laughs> Sophia Rianne Miller. <laughs> Sophia has accepted a nursing position in the Intensive Care Unit at the Kansas Heart Hospital in Wichita. Rebecca Ann Mitchell. <laughs> Rebecca will begin her nursing career in a coronary intensive care unit at Via Christi St. Francis, and after gaining experience, become a flight nurse.
Kelsey Lee Nail. Kelsey will be employed as a staff nurse in the Medical Surgical Trauma Unit at Wesley Medical Center. April Nicole Newfield. April will be seeking employment in labor and delivery or pediatric nursing, the areas that most interest her as she begins her career. Nancy Aide Ortiz. Nancy will be employed in Wichita at Ascension Via Christi St. Teresa as a staff nurse caring for medical surgical patients. Sarah Lynn Rose Murray Oyer. Sarah Lynn has accepted a staff nurse position at Newton Medical Center, where she will provide nursing care for patients recovering from surgery. <laughs> Alexandra Nicole Pels. <laughs> Alexandra will begin her career as a nurse in the telemetry medical surgical unit at Kansas Heart Hospital in Wichita. Ashley Nicole Rowletter. <laughs> Ashley will be employed as a staff nurse at Salina Regional, Medical, Re Regional Health Center, where she will care for infants in the newborn intensive care unit. <laughs> Alexandra Michelle Smith. Alexandra has accepted a nursing position at Menorah Medical Center in Overland Park, Kansas, where she will be working on a unit with cardiac and oncology patients. <laughs> Vanessa Reve Steckley. <laughs> Vanessa plans to pursue her passion of providing nursing care for pediatric patients at a hospital in Lincoln, Nebraska. Kaylee Brooke Stevens. <laughs> Kaylee will begin work as a staff nurse in the medical surgical trauma at Wesley Medical Center following graduation. <laughs> Shamika Nicole Thompson. Shamika will be employed at Kansas Medical Center in Andover, Kansas, where she will serve as a staff nurse in the telemetry unit and cross-train to the intensive care unit. Lillian Trifena. Lillian is exploring options for where she will be located after graduation. She hopes to begin working in a medical surgical unit or cardiac intensive care. <laughs> Maura Marie Wells. <laughs> Maura plans to move to Colorado Springs, Colorado, where she will pursue a position in the nurse residency pr program. Jocelyn Zeller. <laughs> Jocelyn will be employed as a staff nurse at Emeticis Hospice, Hospice of Wichita, where she will provide in-home care to clients and families who are facing a life-limiting illness. Congratulations to all of our 2019 nursing BSN graduates.
And graduates, I invite you to move your tassels from the right side to the left side, following completion. Each year, the Heston College academic community honors members of the graduating class who have achieved a grade point average of 3.9 to 4.0 during their time of study on our campus. To qualify for this recognition, a student must have accumulated a minimum of 30 credit hours at Heston College. Earning a GPA of between 3.9 and 4.0 is certainly a significant accomplishment. Today, we have six BSN graduates who have achieved this academic distinction. They are wearing gold honor cords to recognize this achievement. I invite each graduate name to the 2019 Dean's List to please stand and face the audience as your name is read, and please hold all applause until all six Dean's List graduates have been recognized. Christy Bell, Caitlin Diaz, Sophia Miller, Ashley Rowletter, Vanessa Steckley, and Lillian Trifana. As we celebrate the achievements of the Heston College nursing class of 2019, it seems fitting and important to bless these graduates as they enter their new professional role. This morning, we acknowledge the special mission of nursing. The healing touch is at the core of the relationship between the nurse and the patient. We bless the hands of these graduates in order to recognize the work that their hands will do to bring healing to all those that they care for as nurses. It is a way that we, as a community, can honor the calling to which these graduates have responded. It is a way to strengthen them for the journey and dedicate them for their lives of meaningful service. We invite you to participate with us in blessing their hands by reading with me and read it, the litany located in your program. We will read the part of the leader, and please join us then in the bold lines to be read by all. Bless these hands that will touch life and feel pain. Bless, Bless these, these hands. hands. That will calm the anxious and embrace with compassion. Bless, Bless these, these hands. hands. That will offer care in times of health and illness. That will nurture the sick and offer healing. Bless these hands. That will welcome new life and comfort the dying. Bless these hands, hands that care. For they are the work of your hands and minister in your name. Graduates will now come forward for the blessing of the hands.
Please pray with us. Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for all of the friends and the family that are here today to celebrate this occasion and to show their love and their support. Lord, I thank you for each one of these graduates. I thank you for their achievements, and I ask that you bless their future endeavors, Lord. I thank you for the faculty and staff. It was so evident by the blessing of the hands how much love and wisdom and support and experience that they've shown over these last two to four years. Lord, I thank you for those relationships that have been formed between each other and the faculty during this time. Bless each one of us as we leave this place, and I ask for travel mercies for all. And dear Lord, give each nurse here an understanding soul to pray. Fill their heart each day with comfort and encouragement as they deal with the nursing duties that they are called to do. Especially, Lord, when they are confronted with uncooperative patients and or unsympathetic coworkers. Be with each and every one of them as they care for the patients on a daily basis, and I ask that you would guide their tongues. Give them grace and wisdom when they are called upon to deal with the irritations, complainings, and aggravations that they may approach. Make each and every one of them sensitive towards those that are indifferent, unknowing, and afraid. Let their love and caring spirit shine above any other attributes that they may have. I pray, Lord, that your compassion pour into their hearts so that they may bring comfort and joy into the lives of the ones who are suffering at that moment. And Lord, I pray that each may also do their very best, simply because you are there to lead and guide them. In Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Students, you're no longer students. You're graduates. As we leave here, I want to offer to you this charge as you go forth as graduates of Heston College. Go celebrating and smiling, knowing you're a proud graduate of Heston College, standing alongside alums spread all around this world. Go knowing we as faculty, staff, and administrators will continue to cheer you forward. Go, continually seeking knowledge with wisdom as you face the challenges of the day. Go, pursuing to live in peace with all God's children through a life of mutual transformation. Go, using your God-given skills talents, and passions to seek the welfare of the poor, for among them you will see Christ's face. Go, overcoming fear with curiosity, and go, knowing that God walks with you and that you are never, ever alone. Amen. Following the recession, we'll be meeting in the community center next door in the large room where you can congratulate our graduates. Graduates, faculty, staff, let's stand for a recession.